Good morning everyone. This is going to be my guide for how to play Brian in Tekken 7. Now, there are two very important things I feel I need to bring up here initially before we jump into the move list and start talking about specifics. If you're getting into Brian and you're somewhat serious about Tekken, then these are two things I feel uh, you need to keep in mind initially with the character. Uh, the first thing I'm going to mention is that Brian is a backsway character. This is Brian's backsway. It is performed by doing quarter circle back and the reason this matters is it's going to change the way you perform your Korean back dash cancel. Now you might not be doing a lot of Korean back dash cancelling in your game yet but this is definitely something that you're going to want to learn at some point. If you want to learn more about it, there's a video on my channel talking about the technique, but I'm just going to show you the difference real quickly here. You're going to want to perform something that looks like this, and you're going to want to avoid to perform something that looks like this. The difference is that you're cancelling your uh, backdash with down back and not with quarter circle back, because if you do it with quarter circle back, you're going to do a back sway unintentionally unintentionally which is very dangerous and so you're gonna have to use the down back version of the technique to backdash properly with this character if you are using quarter circle back technique uh, today don't worry it's not that much of a difficult adjustment I can do both pretty reliably so just give it a little bit of practice and as with all things taken with practice it's gonna get a lot easier to do the next thing I'm going to mention is that this tutorial is not going to talk about Taunt Jet Upper and I don't think that you should be worrying a lot about Taunt Jet Upper. So I'm very sorry if you came to this video wanting to learn that technique but if you don't know what we're talking about when we say Taunt Jet Upper, basically Brian has a way to set up his very powerful launcher Jet Upper uh, off of an unblockable taunt. This is an extremely difficult to pull off technique where you basically need to be completely frame perfect and there are very few players in the world who are good enough that they can pull this off and basically nobody can do it reliably whenever they want to. It is hard enough that it's uh, almost never going to be a factor in real competitive play unless you're already one of the most uh, accomplished Tekken players in the world. So. Don't worry too much about Taunt Jet Upper. It might not even be something that you ever have to learn if you're going to play this character at a high level. He's fantastically strong and powerful, and he doesn't need to rely on this technique to be good. Uh, but the reason I'm bringing it up is that I don't want you to worry about learning something that is almost impossibly hard. Uh, when you're just trying to pick up a character for the first time, because you're going to end up wasting your time. Don't worry about Taunt Jet Upper unless you're already so good with Brian that you have no need to watch a video I make about him. Um, become an advanced Brian player and then maybe add that for fun at the end if you feel you need to. Alright, that's going to be my first sort of initial points on the character that I felt are important to bring up. Now we're going to start talking about uh, specifics and the move list. Uh, let's start as we usually do with a 10 frame uh, block punishment for standing. So. Uh, block punishment is actually uh, Brian's sort of one weak point. It's the one thing that he might not be exceptionally good at, but don't worry too much about that because he's uh, strong enough and he doesn't rely that much on block punishment that it's not really going to hinder you as much as you might think. But for uh, 10 frames standing, you have 1, 2 as a very standard jab string and the reason you might want to use this for your 10 frame block punishment is that you have a couple of extensions that are quite decent. The 1-2 by itself gives you plus 5 on hit by the way which is uh, pretty good and then you have the options of doing 1-2-1 one, one, which is a safe mid at minus 6 this is going to give you a counter hit uh, launch which is very powerful especially considering that the move is safe. Uh, you also have a low option which is the 1-2-3 this is a minus 12 low, so you're never going to eat a uh, very substantial punishment for getting it blocked. But actually what usually happens when this move gets dealt with is it gets low parried. So you might actually eat a pretty substantial chunk of damage anyway. And then you have the 1, 2, 4, which is the powerful uh, knockdown high at minus 3 on block. And this is uh, not supremely useful, but it's uh, mainly something you throw out after the jabs to catch somebody maybe at the wall to catch a, a wall splat or something like that. You also have the option, and this is going to be my recommended option for 10 frames, of doing 1-4. Very Leo-esque for a 10 frame block punisher. Decent damage, gives you the plus 4 on hit, so it's only 1 frame uh, less. Then your 1-2 jabs. 
So this is actually my recommended option and uh, probably your best option overall for 10, 11 and 12 frames. Uh, your optimal damage is going to come in the shape of 2-3, uh, but I would say uh, stick with the 1-4 for the most part and collect that nice plus 4. Your next Punisher is going to be at 13 in the shape of down 4 2 one. Uh, down 4 2 one is a quick little natural string, gives you only 23 damage, so as you can see, he doesn't get huge damage for his block punishment necessarily, but this is decent, it's going to give you the uh, plus 4, so same as the 1-4 uh, with Brian, so with his quick uh, block punishment, if you can learn to work off of 1-4, uh, uh, sorry, work off of plus 4 on hit, that's going to be good for you. But that's uh, down for 2-1, not really too much to say about it in terms of punishment. It's there for 13 and uh, damage is uh, a little bit subpar. But it gets better because at 14 you get your uh, launcher. Uh, so he gets it at 14 instead of 15, which is faster than most of their characters. This is jet upper, it's 14 frames, the uh, input is forward back too which is a little bit of an unorthodox input that you might not be used to performing but uh, don't worry it's easy to learn and you're going to be able to get it out fast enough that it's going to come out at those 14 frames meaning that it's very good for your block punishment here. Um, I'm also going to mention that um, you have the option of mock punch for uh, uh, 14. Uh, this is uh, 14 in theory, it might be a little bit hard to get out that fast because the input is 442 but it's very fast, it knocks down, and it's your power crush move. It's a very good power crush move, so I would have talked about it in another section, but I'm gonna mention it for a quick uh, Punisher here because it's very good in those situations where you need a little bit of range. So if you're uh, punishing something like 422 from Claudio or maybe Death Fist from Paul, this is gonna be a very good option for you. Also 14, and it has the armor property, which is obviously uh, not a thing when you're block punishing, but it's very good when you're looking for wall splats. And then I'm going to give you, for 15 frames, 4214. The reason this is uh, important to keep in mind is that sometimes you're definitely going to want to punish uh, with uh, a mid. And because Jet Upper is a high, this is going to be a very good option. It's very fast at 15, and while it doesn't give you full combo damage, 42 is uh, big enough that you're going to be satisfied with the damage that you get. Um, it's very important for doing stuff like block punishing rage arts, which is, uh, it, you know, it's comfortably going to kill most people who are using rage arts, which is very important. And uh, you might not feel comfortable using jet upper all the time, so this is uh, important to sort of keep in mind. I'm also going to give you 4-1, uh, four and uh, while this is sort of a block punisher uh, at 18 frames, this is more of a, uh, a long to mid-range whiff punisher in my opinion. Uh, it's a reliable uh, sort of standard launcher in that sense and uh, it's good for the range basically and it's going to give you uh, a good combo but if you need something uh, very long range for a lot of minus frames you have the option of using Ford uh, for one of 18 frames as well. Now let's talk about while standing. You have a little bit of a unique option in the sense that you actually have two different versions of your 11 frame while standing Punisher. Uh, this is while standing uh, 1 plus 2, which is 11 frames, uh, very fast. Now, it doesn't do a lot of damage and doesn't have a lot of range, um, and it gives you the uh, plus 6 on hit, which is actually pretty good. But the while standing 4 has more range, more damage, and gives you the uh, plus 5, so you only lose one frame of advantage uh, for using this slightly more powerful option. Now, there are probably reasons out there why you might want to use this while standing 1 plus 2 for your Punisher here. And I'm sure there are uh, advanced Brian players uh, who will let us know when this might be a preferred option in the comment section. But uh, for just very standard uh, stuff, I'm going to recommend that you stick with the while standing 4 for now. For 12 frames, you're going to get your while standing 3, which is this knee. It gives you uh, 18, which is uh, not huge, but it gives you a nice plus 4 on hit, so that's uh, for 12. And then you don't really have anything until 15, where you're going to get your while standing 1, which is your uh, sort of standard while standing 15 frame launcher. Uh, very powerful, uh, gives you nice uh, combo damage because you can use this spin move, which you don't get to use all that often with Brian, uh, but it's a very powerful one. We're going to talk more about combos off of all of these launchers later, obviously, so don't worry about it uh, for now. I'm also going to give you a Fisherman Slam. And the reason I'm going to, I mean, usually when you have something ridiculous, ridiculously powerful like this, I might not stick it in the punishment section, but uh, I want to do this here because even though the move is 19 frames to come out, making it 
pretty slow. There are a lot of situations where you will be able to get 19 on an opponent, such as when you block a low that staggers, uh, hell sweeps and uh, uh, snake edges and, and uh, moves like that, you know, falling leaf or whatever. And I think it's actually important uh, to keep Fisherman Slime in mind for those situations for one very important reason. The damage is so good, the damage is so incredibly good on this launcher that you actually lose such a substantial uh, chunk for using uh, if you use while stunning one instead. Uh, I'm just going to do something quick here. I don't know what the optimal combo is here, but I'm just going to show you something real quick to so sort of illustrate my points. I think you're going to be able to get uh, something like this. Okay, so that's probably not the optimal damage there, but that's 86, which is basically half of the opponent's life bar. And that is a big enough damage uh, different, uh, difference that I think that you should use this uh, move when you have the opportunity. All right, that's going to wrap up block punishment for Brian. And now I want to jump in and talk about more of his sort of useful moves and neutral game. We've already mentioned his uh, jab strings in the punishment section, but these are actually pretty important uh, poke tools for Brian. Uh, like I mentioned, the 1-2 is decent by itself, and then the 1-2-1 uh, is the counter hit mid at minus 6, which is very good, and it becomes empowered by the fact that you have both a duckable high and this uh, decent little low here for uh, uh, a bit of uh, chip damage at the end too, so I'm getting <laughs> sidestep 1 here a lot, don't worry about that move. It's a very uh, good move by the way, but we're not going to talk about it right now. Uh, one, two, three, yeah, and then one, two, one, and one, two, four. And these are uh, important moves that you are going to be using with Brian. Uh, for the most part, I would say stick with the uh, one, two, one. Uh, it is sidesteppable, so you just need to keep that in mind. Um, don't finish the string unnecessarily uh, uh, every time, because your opponent's going to, if they're good and they know how to do it, uh, uh, sidestep this uh, one, two, uh, one, the last hit right there. The main mid poke you have as Brian is not your down forward 1, it's actually your down forward 2 and it fills the exact same uh, capacity that a uh, down forward 1 would normally. It's 13 frames to come out and it's a very decent fast and uh, long range mid poke. It's going to give you a very respectable plus 5 on hit which is good for a move like this but then you actually get minus 6 on block which is a little bit uh, more disadvantage than you might expect so it's not uh, super spammable if you get it blocked but it is your main uh, mid poke and it's definitely going to do you solid for that purpose it gets even better because it actually has a couple of uh, decent extensions too we've already mentioned down for 2-1 in the punishment section this is a natural combo uh, and uh, very very decent. It doesn't jail, it is duckable, so if your opponent is very fast and they block the first hit, uh, they can actually go under this high, so you have to keep that in mind. But if they do that, the other option that you have is the down for 2-3, and this is a very good and powerful extension that you have here. Uh, as you can see, uh, mid mix up for that high, uh, that is going to deal a big chunk of damage and knock your opponent down, so they're definitely going to be scared of uh, ducking this move. The 3 extension is minus 13 on uh, uh, block, but if we set Yoshimitsu to all guard here for his second action, you can see that this is actually going to give you a little bit of pushback, and it's one of those moves that even though it is uh, supposed to be very punishable, you actually get away with a lot of the time. So uh, it's more useful than you uh, would initially expect. And that's your mix up for the uh, down for 2 1. So that's the two options that you have down for 2 by itself. Uh, you have down for 2 1 for the high. And then if you want to mix that up with a powerful knockdown mid, you have the three. Very good stuff. Your actual down for the one is a very unique move and something that you're going to want to use with Brian to lock your opponent uh, down. The unique aspect of this move is that you. Uh, uh, can press it four times to do this uh, series of punches. Every single uh, punch in this string is delayable, so I can uh, do stuff like uh, that, and that's the entire string actually performed. The, it's not resetting at any point during this. You can delay the hits quite a lot, and even though every individual hit is minus 10 on block, your opponent is 
definitely going to struggle to punish this because they don't know how many hits you're going to perform. So what I mean is that I can do this and then my opponent knows that that's uh, minus 10 on block so they might try and punish on block but I might just throw out another one and throw out another one and keep on going like this. And uh, it's very, very good for just locking your opponent down and really harassing them. It's very, very powerful for that reason. The maximum amount of hits uh, is four. So uh, delay or no delay, once you do four hits, Brian is going to stop and there's no point in keep on pressing the down forward one. But a very, very powerful uh, lockdown string and harassment tool. It comes out at 15 frames, by the way, so it is definitely slower than the down forward two. So this is uh, your main mid poke and this is something completely different, but still very useful and still very abusable. I think it's a, a supremely powerful tool if you can get good at uh, you know, when to delay it and how to sort of read your opponent's actions while locking them down with this move. It's, it's very, very good. The next move uh, I'm going to uh, talk about here is uh, 4-3. Um, this is a 16 frame uh, mid, which is uh, very good, and it's got the powerful counter hit properties here for the launch. So this is very similar to uh, down forward 4 from Katarina. It's a similar move uh, to that and uh, a lot of characters have th this sort of uh, safe mid for uh, around 15 to 16 frames for a counter hit launcher and it's uh, it's very very good for Brian. Uh, this actually has a little bit of an extended hitbox, so the frame data of the move will change a little bit depending on range. But most of the time when you hit with this move, if you're in a, a sort of semi-spaced up position, it's actually going to give you plus minus zero on a block, which is very good. Meaning that you can continue offense and maybe even set this move up with itself uh, if you're playing against somebody who's sort of unprepared for it. So it's a very good move that I'm going to mention here and uh, even though Brian is an extremely powerful counter hit character who can basically launch you if he gets a counter hit with half of his useful move pool, this is the sort of go-to uh, mid you're going to use for counter hit launching when you've uh, set it up or you have, you know, uh, the feel for that timing when it's time to throw it out. Uh, so that's the main sort of... Uh, counter hit mid that you have. The uh, next move I'm going to talk about here, and this is very very important, is the uh, back one. One of uh, Brian's most iconic and uh, powerful moves. Uh, this is basically a lockdown tool that is going to allow you to uh, create advantage and mix-ups on the fly with Brian whenever you can connect with it. It is a little bit slow to come out, but it actually has some pretty uh, decent range and uh, sort of uh, somewhat evasive properties. So it's not as difficult uh, to connect with as you might expect for a move that is actually, um, I think it's 24 or something to come out. I didn't write down the actual impact frames here, here which wasn't good, but it's, it's above 20 frames at least. Uh, but it's going to lock your opponent down because it gives you frame advantage both on block and on hit. Uh, on block it's going to give you uh, somewhere between plus 3 and plus 4 and it's going to give you the plus 5 on hit. So hit or block you can keep on attacking after this move connects with your opponent's hitbox. And so what you're doing with this move, I mean sidestepping into it is absolutely fantastic but much like uh, the down forward one um, uh, spam punches. This is also another tool that Brian uses to completely lock his opponent down and just make them stand there and eat his offense. And it's actually sort of where he excels the most. I mean, he's very good at keep up, but he's also very good at just making his opponent claustrophobic and feel like they can't really move. And then he just keeps on piling on stuff. And uh, this is the sort of linchpin of that playstyle for him. And there are ways of dealing with it with sideways movement. Uh, mainly, but it's something difficult to, to learn that you have to practice and when you run into people, especially online, who aren't comfortable uh, dealing with uh, back one, then this is going to absolutely destroy them and it's one of those tools that allows uh, Brian to breeze through uh, a lot of uh, the low ranks because he can uh, completely destroy people with this and it's even a useful and powerful move when you're playing against experienced people so a very very good mid and uh, a very important tool. The range is uh, much much longer than you would expect and it's uh, great for getting in at the opponent. Used not really but kind of in the same way as a running two from Dragonov in the sense that it's sort of a get in mid that will give you uh, an advantageous position on both hit and block. Okay, if we're going to move on now, I think I want to talk about 3 plus 4 because I think this might be uh, Brian's best move. Uh, 
maybe not, but it's actually uh, top three in my opinion. It's it's very very good. This is one of the best keep out mids in the game. Full stop. I think it is absolutely fantastic. The range is massive, as you can see right here, uh, and it's going to give you a good chunk of damage and a knockdown on hit. This move is. Uh, minus 13 on block but it's actually not punishable uh, because of the pushback property so if we're gonna set Yoshi to guard here you can see that the pushback properties are very substantial and it's uh, I can't off the top of my head think of anybody who can uh, comfortably uh, punish uh, 13 at this range you know so the move should be considered completely safe in my opinion making it just a completely monstrous keep out tool and there's a style of uh, Brian online that you see that basically stand around and just play keep out with this move and that's the entire play style you know and then whenever their opponent makes a mistake or tries to come in on, on them with a little bit of wonky timing they hit him with an orbital and it's over it's it's such a good keep out tool it completely uh, you know it's one of those moves that when we say dictate the pace of the match this is kind of one of those moves you know uh, and the move becomes even more powerful because on counter hit it's going to give you a massive launch as well so uh, Very very dangerous for the opponent to try and come in on this and the only way they can do it properly is to try and move around it with sideways movement Which isn't easy because the move has massive range as well So this should definitely be top of mind whenever you're playing keep out or you're in the sort of mid-range uh, because uh, you're either safe if you get a blocked, get a massive hit for good damage on hit, or get a massive launch on counter it. So it's a win-win-win situation. And uh, one of the best moves you have full stop. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, let's see how we're doing for time here. We're actually doing alright for once. I'm actually a little bit ahead of schedule, so that's nice. Um, the next move I'm uh, going to mention here is the 444. This is your uh, mock kick and uh, another one of your uh, best moves. Uh, fantastic gap closer and just great move overall. It has a little bit of a wonky uh, sidestep built in, but this is actually very good because during the startup frames of this move, it will actually evade your opponent's attacks by sidestepping them. So this is very, very good. It gives a, an extremely powerful hit. Uh, it gives you 32 damage. I mean, normally you would expect something like this to maybe do 20, but it gives you 32, which is so massive. So absolutely ridiculous move uh, for closing the distance. I mean, it, it is a high, but it's so fast that your opponent is not going to like react to this and duck it. They basically have to hard read and predict it for that to work. So it's not a, a high that gets ducked all that often at all. Uh, and it's just very very good another very good thing about it is again as with most of Brian's useful move pool You get a massive counter hit launch when you do get the counter hit uh, And as you can see like it goes up to 38 here So it's uh, a ridiculous damage on the initial hit and then you can run in and combo uh, for uh, really good damage, so uh, super powerful move and another uh, move that you should keep in mind in your sort of uh, mid-range game or your keep out game um, you can check your opponent with it from a range, uh, kind of like the 3 plus 4 as well, so he's very very good at that. Very good at keep out, very very good at keep out. Uh, long range, powerful counter hits, uh, and uh, difficult to get in on when he's setting up these barriers, right? Now, the most important uh, sort of um, keep out slash uh, barrier move that he has for locking his opponent out of uh, the close range is his orbital. This is uh, Brian's most powerful uh, launcher in my opinion. Not damage wise obviously but just in terms of like properties. Because Brian doesn't really have any uh, standard fast mid launcher like a standard hop kick or down for two. He only really has the jet upper for a 14 frame high. This is what you're going to have to rely on for a mid launcher when you need it but it's a very very good move again this is uh, kind of slow to uh, come out it's 24 to impact but it's one of those orbitals very similar to moves you see from uh, Josie uh, Shaheen and Lars which are slightly slower versions of a normal hop kick but because they have worse uh, because they are slower on startup the trade-off that they get instead is that they're completely safe on block and out of all of those orbital moves out of all iterations of that move in the game I think Brian actually has the best one and I think this is hands down one of the most powerful mid launchers in the game despite the fact that it is a little bit slow to start up 
Uh, like I said, it is uh, safe. You only uh, get minus five on uh, block, which is not that big at all. And uh, Brian doesn't really suffer. He loves to get this blocked and then go into stuff like down jab, and he does fine. Uh, but the reason the move is so good is that you can do uh, an up forward four version and an up forward uh, and an up four version. You don't have a retreating version, uh, but you do have these two. And the uh, hitbox on this move is extremely evasive, much more so than you would expect. It's very, very hard to get in on Brian when he's doing this. The one way you can do it when you're playing against him is you can try and predict the move and jab at him a little bit randomly, and you might catch him in the startup frames for a float combo. But that's basically the one way of dealing with this move. It sort of sucks people into its hitbox because when he goes into the air right here, you can see that Brian is far away and high up, but then his leg uh, comes down and sort of uh, occupies a lot of space in front of him so he's gonna go up and above a lot of stuff here and uh, it's very very difficult to get in on him uh, and it's super super powerful whenever he gets uh, a read on a low because he can low crush that same as you would with a hop kick and even if he's wrong and even if he gets it blocked you know because he's safe it's uh, such a solid option uh, and it even functions as a little bit of a panic move uh, because you know, why wouldn't you just throw out an orbital and look for the launch? It's not like it's going to get you destroyed if you mess it up 90% uh, of the time or 99% of the time. It's just such a fantastic move. Uh, the evasive properties cannot be underestimated and uh, uh, learning when to place this move uh, in your sort of flow with this character is going to be big. But it's, like I said, also a keep out tool that uh, is going to make your opponent very nervous about getting in on you. So like uh, I said earlier, the mid-range with the keep out, the 3 plus 4 with the massive range on that, stuff like mock kick, uh, stuff like mock punch, and uh, this move just makes him an absolute nightmare at the sort of range 2 area right here. Uh, but he's definitely no slouch in the close-up either. Uh, definitely needs to be mentioned. I think he's very good at uh, close-up game and mid-range game and then like way out here and then at sort of range one maybe he's he's not as powerful but he's definitely not weak uh, outside of block punishment i don't think this character really has any sort of weak points i think he is one of the most complete and powerful packages in the entire game okay uh we mentioned your power crush uh, which is your uh uh, mock punch a little bit earlier, minus 10, massive range, 14 frames to come out, very fast, one of the most powerful wall splatting tools you have, another powerful gap closer, round ender, you can go through all kinds of stuff with this, and as you can see, again, 32 damage, I would have expected this to do between 20 and 25, but it just cas casually gets to 32, which is uh, huge, so uh, damage is another sort of main point of Brian. Even in uh, inside combos and outside combos, it just tends to get uh, the combo you would expect a normal character to get, plus 20% or something like that. His damage is a little bit disgusting a lot of the time. It's very, very powerful. So that's fun for you if you're a Brian player. If we're going to talk a little bit about the actual back sway before we move on, this can be considered his sort of stance, I suppose. Uh, it's not uh, super useful outside of two specific moves when you're new with the character, but these two specific moves are extremely, extremely good, so we need to talk about them. The first uh, move I'm going to mention is the uh, quarter circle back three, which is your uh, hatch kick or maybe a low soccer kick if you prefer. This is uh, one of your best harassment tools and one of the most important uh, Brian moves overall. It's a very good, uh, fast, long range low. Uh, that deals a very respectable chunk of damage, but even more importantly, because it's very unlikely to get blocked most of the time because of how fast it is, it is a very, very good tool for um, either racking up damage when you, like I said earlier, you're locking your opponent down, right? You're making them very nervous about pressing buttons, you're making them nervous about moving, you, you keep keeping him locked down, and whenever you need to tack on a chunk of damage and continue your offense, you can throw out a hatchet kick for 21, and you're going to get frame advantage, you can keep on going. But the other way you can use the move is from a mid-range when you need to get in, you can use it to get a uh, frame advantage and close the distance, and then you're able to uh, start mixing your opponent up. So it's got uh, a lot of good applications, and it's uh, one of the most powerful lows, again, I think, in the game. I think it's absolutely uh, fantastic. But the input is quarter circle back three. Uh, it is minus 13 on block, meaning that you're not going to eat a substantial punish most of the time, but it is one of those minus 13 moves where you need to be careful about three characters, basically. Uh, Kazia, um, Josie, and Eddie. 
who are gonna be able to launch punish this. And then uh, there are, I think, uh, maybe the Street Fighter style characters like Akuma can get uh, powerful stuff going as well. But with a standard launcher, the three characters that can launch it are those three, and then everybody else is gonna get kind of limited punishment here. So it's a fantastic low, and it's not gonna get seen all that often. So don't worry about getting it punished. Uh, too much, but if you are making your opponent scared of this move What you can do is you can um, allow them to see the core circle back and then you can uh, mix this up with the other very powerful uh, Back sway move that you have which is the core circle back four or uh, the mid soccer kick So I kind of call this low soccer kick and mid soccer kick But you can call them hatch kick and soccer kick or whatever you prefer Maybe you call this the football kick or the punt or whatever who knows uh, but um the reason this is so powerful is that it is a very uh, long range sort of sweeping uh, mid launcher that is going to be a perfect natural mix up for the hatch kick. And so these two moves complement each other perfectly to create uh, a powerful package here. Now, while it is possible to perform these moves fast enough that your opponent cannot see the actual back sway, uh, like I said, if you want this to be a powerful mix-up, you might actually want to delay it a little bit so that your opponent can see the backsway because they're going to see the backsway, think about the hatched kick, and that's when you can uh, force them to duck or trick them into ducking and then hitting them with the other option, right? Uh, this move is uh, minus 12, so it is punishable on block, uh, but not by too much. It could have been a lot more punishable for how powerful it is in my opinion, uh, but minus 12 is not that big and it's uh, uh, very, very decent for how useful it is. Now there's one more thing I need to talk about when we're talking about the dichotomy between uh, Quarter circle back three and quarter circle back four, which is that this is uh, actually a very, very powerful package for Oki and is going to create a sort of natural and easy to understand Oki game for you. Very good when you're new to a character to have such a easy and straightforward option, like two options that are going to complement each other perfectly. They come out of the same stance, uh, so very, very nice. Now, while you might expect the hatch kick to uh, hit. Uh, grounded it actually doesn't this is going to be your main option for uh, just a low when your opponent gets up standing But then the quarter circle back four this is the move that is going to deal very chunky damage to Grounded opponents and it's also obviously gonna launch them if they get up crouching looking for the hatch kick uh, Meaning that uh, this is uh, something that covers all bases pretty nicely and it's a very very powerful Oki package and it's an Oki package that works uh, from a range so if you're knocking your opponent down uh, and you need to close a little bit of distance against them, that's going to work for that too. So, very, very good. These two moves complement each other perfectly. You can use them for mix ups, uh, you can use them for just, uh, you know, closing the distance and getting uh, frame advantage, and you can use it for OK. So, very, very good. And I should mention now that I've said that you get advantage off of the quarter circle back three here that it actually gives you plus four, which is very substantial for a low like this. So, getting in here with plus four is extremely nice. So, uh, you should abuse this low with uh, Brian whenever you're able to. Very, very good. Okay. I think we should talk a little bit about back four uh, before we move on, but I think maybe we're going to leave that for when we switch stages because I'm going to have to switch stages to show you a uh, wall game with Brian. So for now, let's talk a little bit about low pokes outside of the hatched kick. You have uh, down back three. This is going to be your sort of standard low poke when you need to crush highs. Very decent move, very decent range, but kind of standard overall. It's going to give you minus 12 on block, which is not that big and never launch punishable by any means. So it's uh, very, very decent um, and uh, kind of standard. But yeah, the range is there and it does give you the high crush. So that's your standard sort of high crushing low poke. And then uh, your other option if you don't want to go into uh, full crouch is that you have down four. Uh, down 4 I actually think is absolutely fantastic. You can see that the range here is uh, pretty massive for a standard low poke. It's fast and uh, even better, like it's blazing fast. I think it's like 15 frames, which is very good for low like this. And then it's only minus 11 on uh, block. So this is going to give you while standing 4 for punishment at the worst. So very, very good low poke. Doesn't uh, crush highs, but sometimes you like that because you want to keep on attacking from, you know, your normal standing moveset. So absolutely fantastic so for low pokes i'd say down back three and down four is all you need to worry about and then you have the hatched kick uh when you need to use a more offensive more chunky low and uh, you want a specifically frame advantage on hits so you can keep on attacking right 
And then if you want the big boss of the wall low, you have a, a snake edge. Well, you have the snake edge. This is actually the move that the move archetype is uh, named after. Uh, down for three. And uh, this is a move that, uh, well, I'm not a huge fan of, but it's uh, something that you uh, are maybe going to use on occasion, depending on what kind of player you are. All right, uh, I think, uh, let's have a look at the time here. Are we doing all right? Yeah, let's talk about combos. We're actually doing all right for time for once. Uh, that means we can go a little bit deeper with uh, your combos because there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, I know there are a lot of very good Brian moves that we didn't have the opportunity to talk about yet, but I want to keep this relatively simple and I think you can actually get very far with the character using just the, the sort of basics that I've explained so far and then you can tack on stuff as you go but this is uh, really the, the most important stuff. Uh, I guess yeah one uh, move we should mention before we go any further is the uh, full crouch uh, down forward 4 which is a new move he got recently. A very powerful mid that you can use from full crouch. Uh, very very safe. I mean it, it you can punish it in theory but it's one another one of those moves that goes unpunished so often. And the reason it's so powerful is that Brian, he likes to opt out with down jabs whenever he's at a frame disadvantage. And then you can just do this uh, to uh, go straight into something very offensive here. It's another one of those moves that Brian has that's going to give you powerful launch and counter hit. Uh, and it's just a fantastic move as well. So when you find yourself in full crouch and you want to get out with something uh, substantial, uh, I'd recommend you use this move. It's, it's very, very good. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about combos. Um, I need to be on a wall of stage to do this because your wall carry is so ridiculously good that there are almost no wall stages in the game where I can actually perform the whole combo without hitting the wall uh, halfway. So uh, if we're going to start with uh, just a very standard combo that you're going to be able to use off of most of your stuff, uh, I think we can start with a uh, jet upper. A uh, jet upper is actually a bad example. Let's start with uh, orbital. Um, the very standard combo that you're going to be using most of the time, uh, easy to learn when you first start out, is going to look something like this. Now I'm going to show the combo first and then talk through it like I normally do. So uh, it's going to look uh, something like this. Right, so as you can see the damage is very substantial even for a sort of standard easy option. You're going to get above 60 almost all the time and uh, a lot of time even more. Um, so what I did here is I use the uh, orbital to launch, then I uh, do a down back two, which is this very floating good mid that you have with Brian. The reason this is so good is it basically makes him unable to uh, drop combos. Um, anytime he needs to sort of pick up something uh, from the ground and continue his uh, combo, he can use this move and it's, it's almost always going to work. It's a fantastic move for that purpose. Then you need to reflow with a one jab, then you spin with back two, four, which is this spin move right here. Uh, very, very good. Uh, you have the option of using quarter circle back uh, two, four as well, uh, but they're gonna lead to the same damage in this situation. So there's no need to uh, use the quarter circle back version if you don't want to. Then you're gonna run up and uh, you have a crouch dash with Brian. Um, and uh, you can go into this, you can transition into it off of your back three, which is this uh, uh, mid right here. So you do back three, hold forward, and he goes into the crouch dash. And then you have two options for your ender. You can use uh, two, one for uh, good damage and very substantial wall carry. That sends your opponents sort of diagonally upwards towards the wall. Or you can use the 4-2-1, which is going to give you just like one point more of damage, so it's only slightly more damage, and gives you a wall carry, but it sends them very horizontally far towards the wall, but not uh, it doesn't give you that much height. So it's going to be an issue of what kind of wall splat you're looking to create, but he's one of those characters that always gets good wall carry, uh, even when he's just performing his standard combo, which is obviously very nice. So I'm going to show the combo one more time here. All right, there we go. If we're going to show you something for uh, Jet Upper now, uh, you can use the exact same thing pretty much, but you can use a damage filler here to get very decent damage. Uh, one option you have is to use the Ford 1 plus 2, which is this powerful damage high, and the combo is going to look like this. So you can see that was basically the same thing. I did a 2-1 for the Ender. Uh, but I filled in with the Ford 1 plus 2 there. You can also spin right away with a mock kick if you want to. 
Uh, sorry, that's not it. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Sorry. There we go. You can see that's very respectable damage too, and it's uh, maybe slightly more easy to perform, I don't know. But those are uh, two options I'm going to give you off of uh, Jet Upper. But as you can see, the main thing you do with Brian is you use a spin move that has a lot of damage, and then you run up and you do back three into some sort of crouch dash move and all of those options have so much damage that your uh, combo is almost always going to be solid. His, his combo uh, damage is and, and game overall is just very very good. Uh, if we're going to talk a little bit about uh, should we talk about counter hits next? Are there any more standard launchers? Well I showed you the uh, oh yeah let's talk about while standing one because that's important. Again, uh, really good damage, very easy to perform. So what I'm doing here is I'm just launching with while standing one, and I'm using back two one four uh, for the spin, and then I'm doing the standard ender, which is back three hold forward uh, four two one. So it's basically you just do two strings in a row, and you get the whole combo right. Very solid stuff, and you obviously have the option to uh, modify this uh, for the uh, slightly higher wall carry with that move. So very good as well. Uh, if you're going to use the Fisherman Slam here, I'm uh, going to give you this combo, which is uh, the same one that I just did off of the Wild Standing 1, only you need to change the direction, right? So you need to uh, be aware that you need to hold back instead of forward uh, when you do the cancel into the crouch dash, but it's basically the same combo for a lot more damage. And uh, I'm sort of not sure if I should be doing this, but let's give you something off of... Uh, <laughs> snake itch as well. You can do a lot of stuff like you can use this for a spin here if you want to but if you want to get decent damage my recommendation would actually be that you do a uh, down forward 3 which is a snake edge and then you do this. And you get uh, 60 plus which is good for this launcher. Uh, what I did here is I did the snake edge and then I crouch cancelled into uh, down back 2 for the refloat. But something I found when researching the character is that if you don't want to do a crouch cancel here what you can actually do is you can just stand and wait uh, for the uh, Brian to naturally recover into standing. And then do down back 2 and you're still going to get the combo no problem. So just uh, do a snake edge, wait for half a second and then do down back 2 and you're going to be fine and then you can combo just as normal. Okay, I think we're going to jump stages for now so we can talk a little bit about uh, wall game. Alright, so we've switched stages and because we have a little bit of time I'm going to show you some counter hit launchers and then show you a little bit of wall game and some other bits and pieces that I haven't talked about yet. So I think the first thing I need to mention that I forgot to mention in the previous section is that the hatchet kick, which is this fantastic low that you have, will actually give you guaranteed damage on counter hit. Uh, the damage uh, you want to get here is quarter circle back uh, 3 into quarter circle back 4. So these moves basically have endless synergy with one another. Absolutely fantastic, both of them. But yeah, this hatch kick is so great for any kind of reasons, but the uh, or any number of reasons. But the counter hit properties are also extremely solid. So that's something that I just forgot to mention. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, your uh, one plus two throw that you're going to want to use for your uh, basic throw mix up so that you're not just using generic throws is not down forward 1 plus 2 with Brian it's actually forward forward 1 plus 2 and you'll get this which gives you good Oki and is a very decent throw overall it's nice that it comes out of a dash because you get natural range on it because of that reason right now before we show you counter hit combos I think I need to uh, mention that there is actually one launcher you have where you need to do a little bit of a different combo than what I've shown you so far and it's the quarter circle back four so I'm just going to show that first and then move on to counter hit so the combo you need to do here looks like that uh, I uh, messed up the ender there so let's do it again There we go. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing a 1 plus 2, which is this fast sort of homing move here. And then you do a down back uh, down back 2, jab, spin with uh, back to 4. Then you run uh, run up and do the ender, which is down uh, 
3-2, which I think is the best damage you can actually get uh, for an Ender right there. And, you know, you see that this launches them at a pretty awkward, uh, in an awkward way with their face towards you and stuff, so th that's the reason you need to uh, do a little bit of a, a weird combo here. But if you can uh, learn how to do this, it's actually very reliable and solid, so uh, there you go. Okay, let's talk about some counter egg combos. Um, uh, for 3, again, it's more of the same that I've shown you so far. You can see the massive uh, wall carry properties of the Crouch Dash 2 1 for the Ender there. Maw Kick, again, uh, more of the same. Uh, good damage with good wall carry. Uh, the back one, again, you can do the exact same combo that we've been doing so far. So it's uh, all pretty easy to understand, right? Um, now, uh, I'm going to mention here, just because we have time, that um, you can actually get some pretty serious uh, max damage out of Brian's combos by connecting with a very clutch dash jab after while standing, instant while standing, 3-4. That's difficult to do. I haven't practiced it for this tutorial. Uh, I guess now that I mentioned it, I might as well try and show it. Um, like I say, I haven't practiced it, so don't be upset with me if I can't do it. But uh, I'm going to use uh, counter hit uh, full crouch down for for as the example. And this is something that you can do in a lot of Brian's combos to get some pretty ridiculous damage. But like I say, it's 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 pretty hard to do. So let's see if I can just show you to illustrate what it is I'm talking about here. Okay, there it is. Okay, that was uh, probably a little bit easier than I would have ex expected, but I'm guessing that this launcher is uh, pretty easy to do this with because you have plenty of time to pull off the instant while standing 3-4. Uh, but that is something that you can do off of a couple of launchers, and you, you've probably seen this in combo videos and stuff, which is why I'm bringing it up if you're curious about it. But basically, you run up, you do instant while standing 3-4, you do a very uh, fast uh, dash jab 1, and then you're going to go into back 3 into your normal ender. So that's an option that you have, and it's uh, the best damage option you have off of this launcher too I'm pretty sure because otherwise you're kind of gonna struggle to do uh, really good damage here but I think another kind of easy thing you can do or if you just want some easy damage is to run up duck while standing 3-4 down 3-2 and at least you'll get 59 which is something so all right that's gonna be it for the combo section now I want to talk a little bit about the wall and about uh, back four at the wall specifically because this move is insane uh, Brian is known for having some of the most ridiculous wall game uh, in Tekken, and I think that's probably true. Um, the wall combo that you want to do, uh, let's talk about back four first. Actually, back four is a very unique mid with Brian, because it's going to give you, it's 16 frames to come out, and then it gives you plus 15 on hit, because it causes this sort of stagger on the opponent, right? Now, that means that you can get guaranteed damage, but it's because the, the opponent walks backward, uh, backwards during the uh, uh, hit animation here, it's hard to get good stuff out in the open. You can get mock punch and stuff, but it's not all that easy because you need to be very fast. But at the wall, because the opponent can walk away from you, you can get ridiculous damage here. And the preferred option if you're using this, uh, especially for an Oki mid, excuse me, at the wall is Jet Upper. And then your damage becomes uh, bonkers because you can do something like... And you can get even more there if you delay the last hit, I'm pretty sure. So uh, that's what you have here for your uh, a very, very insane Okimit in the shape of back four. And that just needs to be mentioned as a part of his wall game. If we're going to show you his uh, wall combo, it's going to be the same thing that we use for an ender in his normal combos. Back three, hold forward, into the crouch dash, and then you're going to do three, four. But this is one of those strings where you can actually get more damage by delaying the final hit. So let's see if we can show you the difference. This is another thing that I haven't really practiced, but let's see if we can just uh, show you what I mean uh, with the difference here. So that's just me doing the string as fast as I can, and it gives me 59. And then if I try and uh, put delay on the final hit, not the second to last hit, that needs to come out fast for this to work. But if I just put some delay on the uh, very last hit, that was a little bit too slow.
and there you go and you can get 64 which is a big enough difference that you should practice pulling that delay off so that's going to be your standard wall combo they're going to use in most cases it is very very good for damage it has disgusting damage and brian has disgusting damage overall he is very very good at getting super solid damage and he almost never has to settle for less so uh yeah what an amazing character what a powerful uh choice and uh even though he has some of these like legendary sort of difficult to pull off techniques like the taunt jet upper he's actually in my opinion a very uh, straightforward character that you're gonna uh, find pretty easy to pick up and very very uh, intuitive to play for the most part just need to get over the fact that you don't really have those uh, fast standard launchers like a hop kick or a down for two but the uh, orbital is more than good enough to make up for that uh, the jet upper is more than good enough to make up for that and then also the fact that you have all of these very very powerful counter hits in just your standard offense makes him an absolute powerhouse I think he excels at range 2 because of his uh, am amazingly powerful keep out with moves like this uh, this uh, this and this and he's also very good up here he has very standard uh, but powerful jab strings good uh, fast mid pokes amazing lows especially in the shape of the hatchet kick but also some very decent low pokes and once you carry your opponent to the wall you become uh, a complete monster so yeah uh, what a great character uh, not one of my favorites to play against as you probably know uh, but I hope the tutorial was useful and that you learned something. I'm sorry it was a little bit more disjointed, uh, but it, there were so many things that I could have talked about that I have to, had to cut out of it, basically. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the guide. I hope you liked it, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what character you would like to see next, or if there's anything else you want me to talk about. And if you are a Brian player and you know more about this character than I do, then please educate me and the rest of us in the comment section. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.